Steam locomotives in miniature at the Steam Workshop. This is a live steam test of a freelance steam locomotive called Caledonian. But before that, I thought you might like to see this. I've recently made a couple of videos all about the problems with the steam regulator. So we fixed one end of it and now this happens. This is the regulator handle end. So I think this locomotive requires a little bit more work yet. And as it's quite a nice day today, I think it's a good time to perform a steam test on this very unusual freelance steam locomotive. And for all the beginners out there, the wheel arrangement is 244. That means two leading wheels that don't drive the engine, then the four main driving wheels in the middle of the engine, well, nearly in the middle, and at the rear of the engine, well back with a massive gap between the two, are the four trailing wheels. So really, it looks like there's a set of driving wheels missing. And in the gap between the main driving wheels and the trailing wheels are a pair of injectors, one at each side. Although the left hand injector, which is the one facing the camera, is currently not fitted. It's a bit of a strange design, but it's quite a good club engine. The water in the tank at the back over the four rear wheels is not going to get warm because it's far away from the boiler, so it will be fine for feeding the injectors. So, does it work? Well, that's what I'm going to find out. The regulator is unorthodox, it's a push-pull type. Everything else about the locomotive seems to be fairly standard. In this clip, I'm removing the safety valves so I can fill the boiler with water. Because, as we all know, you cannot have a successful steam test without any water. The water filling method at the steam workshop is quite ingenious in a simple sort of a way. We have six of these milk bottles, which are in a plastic box. So all you do is pick up a milk bottle full of water, tip it into the boiler, then pick up another milk bottle full of water, and so on and so forth. It's a better idea than holding a large, heavy container over the engine. In no time at all, the water level in the gauge glass is near to the top. And now I'm putting some charcoal soaked in paraffin into the fire hole. But the first one was a bit too big, so I'm finding some smaller pieces. Some of these pieces of charcoal are too big for this engine, because don't forget, at the steam workshop, a lot of the engines are much bigger than this one. But in the bottom of the tub full of charcoal and paraffin, there are some smaller pieces, so I'm having to dig those out. Here's a good tip. As you scoop the paraffin soaked charcoal out of the tub, always tip the shovel slightly over the container to drain the paraffin back into the container. Otherwise you could end up with a pool of paraffin just below the engine and around the ash pan, which is not a good idea. The final shovel full of charcoal and paraffin needs to be lit. This is tipped into the fire hole door, and this lights the rest of the charcoal and paraffin mixture inside the firebox. And here you see one of the problems with a miniature steam locomotive. Unlike the full size where there's a natural draft flowing through the boiler, on a model one there isn't. So in the smaller sizes you need to use a blower. This is a centrifugal blower that causes a forced draft through the boiler. And with the fire hole door open, as you can see, the flames are quite bright and it's burning well. Once the fire is well lit and burning well, it's a good idea to just put one shovel full of coal on. Then shut the fire hole door and wait until all the charcoal and the bit of coal you've put on is incandescent. This is a good time to go around the engine, oiling all the points that need oiling. What you mustn't do is keep opening the fire hole door to see how the fire's doing, because when you do that, you're just letting cold air in through the fire hole door, which is not going to help the heating process. All you have to do is wait, and you will have a healthy fire in the firebox. And then you can add some more coal, as I'm showing here. And don't forget, as soon as you've shoveled more coal into the firebox, shut the fire hole door. Although I'm currently off camera, what I'm doing at the moment is fitting the injector that's missing from the left hand side of the engine. The video is not running in real time, I keep speeding it up just to move it along. But anyway, in the time it took to fit the injector to the left hand side, the fire is now looking good. And I can now build up the depth of fire by putting some more coal on. But don't forget, as soon as you've shoveled the coal into the firebox, close the fire hole door. And I've only opened it here because I'm just about to put some more coal on. The general accepted principle for firing a steam locomotive is one shovel full at the back, one shovel full at the front, and a shovel full at each side. But on a very small engine like this, just evenly coat the fire, that's the best way to look at it. Don't put a massive amount on because that will just kill the fire and if the engine was running, you would see the pressure drop. 
I'm logging the results of this steam test so that any problems can be put right once the engine has finished steaming. In no time at all, the engine's reached blowing off point. The needle on the gauge has hit the red line and the safety valves are blowing off. I forgot to mention that as soon as the pressure on the gauge hit 40 pounds per square inch, I removed the electric blower and turned on the main steam blower. This directs a jet of steam up the chimney which draws the fire. Because the steam blower and the safety valves use steam, the water level in the gauge glass is now low, so it's time to test the first of the injectors. This is the one I was fitting whilst I was raising steam. The principle for a live steam injector is first of all you turn the water on to cool the injector and make sure you have a constant water flow. Then you open the steam valve and initially the flow of water from the overflow increases. Then it slows down to a drip as you open the steam valve and eventually it stops dripping altogether. This means that water is going into the boiler. It's always amazed me how live steam injectors can be made to work at this size, but indeed they do. The water is now right at the top of the water gauge and so the next thing to do is to turn off the steam to the injector followed by the water. I think it's time to open the regulator. I moved the engine into forward gear and the engine's running beautifully. The only problem is it's running backwards. This often happens and it's not a major problem as long as you know about it. By changing the position of the reach rod on the lever frame you can make it so that it works the right way around. I must say though that this engine is running very smoothly in reverse so I'll try it in forward gear. And it seems to run very well in forward gear also, even though the reversing lever is firmly in reverse. That's something I didn't expect, that's a chime whistle, quite a nice sound. The whistle is mounted under the foot plate, that's why I didn't notice what it was. If the engine's big enough, you can mount the whistle in front of the cab, where it's normally mounted on the full size. And what I sometimes do is, using a very small piece of capillary tubing, pipe some steam to the whistle mounted on the front of the cab, which of course is a dummy. But as a wisp of steam comes out of the dummy whistle when you blow the whistle, that looks pretty good. Moving round the other side, here you can see the mechanical lubricator working and it's time to test the injector on the right hand side of the locomotive. And as you can see here, the water's flowing well now, and as I open the steam valve fully, then back off the water slightly, first of all the water just starts to drip from the overflow, and then it dries up altogether, which means that the injector is pumping the water into the boiler. In this case though, the injector is not fully dry, and I wonder why. Hmm, a bit of poetry. Well the reason that it's still dribbling is, look at the pressure, the pressure's way down at 30 psi. I wanted to see how low it would go before the injector didn't work. So 30 psi is borderline. I'll open the regulator and run the engine for a while. By running the engine, the blast from the cylinders going up the chimney caused the pressure to rise. This draws more air over the fire, and more air equals more heat. This locomotive is just sat on a rolling road, so it's running very light indeed. If the engine was pulling some weight, like some passengers behind it, the exhaust steam going up the chimney from the cylinders would really make a noise, like a woof 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 that we've all heard. The chuffing noise that the steam locomotive makes is because it's the output of the cylinders going through the blast pipe and blasting up the chimney. This draws the fire. Steam locomotives are the Ferraris of the steam engine world. The harder and faster that the engine goes, the more blast goes up the chimney from the cylinders 
and the more air is drawn through the fire and the fire burns hotter, which raises more steam pressure, and so on. As you can hear, the tone of the whistle is a good bit different now as the steam approaches working pressure. This is the part of the steam test to make sure that the safety valves are suitable for the boiler. The safety valves must allow the pressure to be at 80 pounds per square inch and no more. If the safety valves are sticking, defective or just too small for the boiler, then the pressure inside the boiler can go above working pressure. But these safety valves were fine. The engine passed its steam test with flying colours. The next thing to do is to blow down the boiler, but first of all I need to make sure that the fire is out. And I also need to let the pressure drop to about £40 per square inch. It's not good to blow down the boiler from full working pressure. This is the blowdown valve and it's fitted at the lowest point on the back head of the boiler. By opening the valve, using a larger than normal adjustable spanner because it's a bit hot down there, all of the water in the boiler is blown out onto the floor. This is a copper boiler, so really it doesn't need blowing down every time, but it's a good idea to regularly blow down the boiler to help prevent any build-up of impurities in the water that could cause problems inside the boiler. So this steam test was a complete success. All I have to say now is thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. I'll just leave you with some earlier footage of the engine running under its own steam. <laughs>